Now for this question, what I've done is I've copied down the diagram that we're given and to this diagram we need to add some more information. So we've got a uniform beam AB which has mass 20 kilograms and its length is 6 meters. Now because it's a uniform beam the weight is going to act in the middle of the beam obviously at 3 meters then from each end. So if we put the weight in here it's got a mass of 20 kilograms so its weight is going to be 20 G newtons. And what I'd want to do now is just add to this some other measurements in these gaps here. Let's say then that's 3 meters that way. We've got 3 meters this side but if we're 1 meter in there this must be 2 meters. So I'm just going to get rid of this 6 meters now because uh, we're not going to need it. The beam rests in equilibrium in a horizontal position then on these two supports at B and C. And uh, we're also told that we've got to find now the magnitudes of the reactions uh, at B and C. So let's just put the reactions on here. They are going to act upwards. Normally I'd use R for a reaction, but the reaction at C can have a little subscript there. The reaction at C. Put the units in newtons and at B we'll have a reaction here. R, B, newtons. So how are we going to find these reactions then? Well, first of all, what I'd want to do is take moments about a particular point. And it doesn't matter where you take moments, but I'm going to want to take moments, say, about either C or B, because it will allow me to take out one of these variables here. If I take moments about C, RC will get, not be in the equation. It will just have RB in, so I'll be able to solve it immediately for RB. And if I take moments about B, I'll be able to find out what RC is, because RB wouldn't be in that equation. So it doesn't really matter which one of these two points I take moments about. So I'm going to take moments about C first of all. So I'll put that in there, moments about C. And in the usual way, what I'd want is a positive sense for taking moments. Well, if I'm taking moments about C, then RC won't enter the equation. RB will be in the equation. And if I take anti-clockwise as positive, I'll end up with RB being a positive term, which is going to make it easier just to manipulate the equation. But it's up to you. You can choose whatever direction you want. So when it comes to taking moments about C, remember the moment of a force about a point is the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance to the point that you're taking moments about. So when I push upwards at the point B, the rod is going to want to turn in an anti-clockwise sense about C. So we've got a positive moment there. Force is RB and we multiply it by the distance to C which is 5 meters. So RB times 5. Then we've got to take into account the 20 G newtons. That force wants to turn about C in a clockwise sense. So that's going to be negative. So we've got minus the force is 20 G and it's a distance of 2 meters away from the point C. So that's going to be multiplied by 2. As for the RC, as I say, it passes through C so there's no turning effect about C. So this is the resultant moment and because it's in equilibrium, the resultant turning force has to be zero. So from this equation now, we've got one unknown RB, we can solve it. So we've got 5RB here and minus 20G times 2 is minus 40G but if we add it to both sides we end up with equaling 40G. Divide both sides by 5 now and you've got RB equals 40G divided by 5 which is 8G. So RB is 8G. We've got a force of 8G newtons. 
Now we've got to find out what the other reaction is at C, RC. And to do this we've got several options. What we could do is take moments about B now and get one equation with RC in. Doing a similar thing to this. Or you could resolve upwards say and get a resolving equation where you could have two unknowns in it and then substitute this value in. I would personally take moments about B. I'll talk about the resolving equation in a moment, okay? But take moments about B and I would have clockwise as being the positive, positive sense here. Why? Because RC, if I turn about B, RC is going to act in the positive sense. You don't have to choose clockwise as positive, you can do it negative, uh, um, anti-clockwise, but that's up to you. So what do we get if we do that? Well, we've got RC wants to turn about B in a clockwise sense. So we've got the force RC multiplied by the distance to B, which is 5 meters. So RC times 5. Then we've got the 20G about B. Well, that's going to want to turn in an anti-clockwise sense about B. So that's going to be minus the force is 20G multiplied by the distance to B, which is 3 meters. This force through B has no turning effect. So this is the resultant moment and it must equal zero because the rod AB is in equilibrium. So we just need to clean this up now. We've got 5RC and this would be minus 60G but if we add it to both sides we end up with 60G divide through by 5 now and you get RC equals 60G divided by 5 which is going to be 12G. 12G Newtons then is the reaction at C. So I've got both of my answers. But I did say that you didn't have to take moments about B. You could have actually resolved if you wanted. Let's just run through what that would have given you. If you had resolved say upwards, the total resultant force upwards here is going to be RC plus RB RC plus RB because they both act in the positive sense but then you've got the 20G which acts downwards in the negative sense so that's going to be minus 20G this is the resultant force and because it's an equilibrium it's going to equal zero and what you could do is just have substituted your 8G into here and worked out what RC was from this equation. So if you had done that, you would have therefore had RC plus the RB of 8G, then minus the 20G equals zero. And obviously 8G minus 20G is going to be minus 12G, but if you add that to both sides, you end up with RC equaling 12G. 12g newton. So that was an alternative way that you could have gone when you had found one of these forces. Just substitute it into this equation. Alright, so I hope that's given you some idea anyway of how you could have gone about that question.